Hey, what's up YouTube? This is Iconic here with Organic Chemistry Made Simple. And in this video, we're going to look at isomers. So, in your organic chemistry class, you'll hear about enantiomers, diastereomers, all these little fancy words and whatnot. And, you know, this video, I'll try to explain how to differentiate between this, uh, between enantiomers versus diastereomers versus stereos, isomers, and so on and so on. Basically, when you think about the word isomers, right, you should think about Basically, we have a certain chemical formula, right? Say C three H eight zero oxygen. I mean oxygen, and depending on how the atoms are arranged, how they're connected, how their spatial arrangement is, right? Depending on the chiral centers, depending if there's mirror images and whatnot, we're gonna call them either enantiomers, diastereomers, or constitution isomers, or conformation, and so on and so on. So all of these terms basically they're just a way of categorizing your molecules so one um, in order to make this uh, very simple for you guys I made like a little flow chart kind of thing and I would highly recommend that before I continue you know before I continue with the video that I, you guys basically jot this down and because that's gonna help you picture you know picture everything and make it easier for you so the overall term we have isomers isomers right they can be divided into uh, three more subcategories. They can be constitutional isomers, conformational, or stereoisomers. And then stereoisomers, they can be divided into another two more categories, enantiomers or diastereomers. And that can be divided into even more to epimers or geometric isomers. Now, I'm going to go into detail how we can classify our molecules into these different categories. So first, let's go with um, constitutional isomers. So let me just erase all of this. So constitutional isomers is probably the easiest one that you can think about, right? Because constitutional isomers is also known as structural structural isomers, right? So and that kind of you know that should give away like what it means is that so example we have a chemical formula. Let's just say we have C3, H8, and oxygen, right? Then from this, we can have several different molecules, right? We can have, let's say we have something that looks like this. We can have something that looks like this. Oxygen and then carbon. And then we can have something that also looks like this. There you go. So these, all of these would be known as structural isomers. Why we, do we call them structural isomers? Because it's simple. You have same formula but completely different connectivity. Right? You look at all these. All of these have three carbons. They all, if you count the hydrogens, you'll see that they all have eight hydrogens and they all have one oxygen right but they all differ in what in the way they're connected right so that's the that's the key point for structural isomers right that you have the same formula but different connectivity now because all these molecules they have completely different connectivity that would that would tell you what that these have these are different molecules therefore they would have they would all have different chemical and physical properties boiling point melting all that stuff um, so this is this is basically what it is structural isomers right same amount of atoms same amount of carbon same amount of hydrogens oxygen whatever but completely different connectivity therefore different chemical and physical properties therefore um, what do you call it? These are all different compounds. So that's that's like I would say that's like a simple you know that's the simplest one that you can think about. Um, let's go to the next one, right? So this is constitutional isomers, and the next one I said is what structural isomers, right? I mean conformational. Uh, can't find my eraser. <laughs> So then the next one is conformational isomers. Conformational isomers. Cool. 
Now, this one, basic, so structural isomers, we just said it has um, different conductivity, right? You have same amount of atoms and everything, same amount of carbon, same amount of hydrogens, and so on, but conformational isomers is same connectivity. Same connectivity. Now, if they have the same connectivity, so that would mean what? It's the same molecule, right? Now, like example, when we're, so keep this in mind, that when we're talking about um, isomers and one nine antimers, diastereomers, we're always com we're usually comparing two two molecules. So when we say um, two molecules, they're what do you call it? They're conformational isomers. That would that would tell us that they have what? They have the same connectivity, right? The only but they differ by <coughs> they differ by um, a single a sigma bond rotation. Uh, differ by sigma bond rotation and if you remember from uh, my, one of my previous videos a sigma bond you can think of it as just a single bond right so let me show you what a conf what conformational isomers look like if you remember Newman projections then this will be very easy for you to understand let's just say we have something like this uh, terrible. <laughs> so if you guys don't remember how to go about Newman projections, how to understand them, then I highly recommend you watch my previous video on Newman projections. So that will make this example really easy for you. Oh, and also this video, in order to understand the different, um, what do you call it, the different in you know, antimers and all the other, all this other stuff that I'm going to talk about. You should have an understanding of chiral centers, um, RNS configuration, and if you don't know what chiral center are, what what chirality is, um, if you're having a trouble with RNS configuration, then um, look for look for a video about that on my channel, and then come back and watch this, because then that will make all of this very simple for you. So let me just add all the hydrogens. I did not add the hydrogens. One second. Uh, so we have a bunch of hydrogens. Now, if you know anything about Newman projections, right? One, if you look at these molecules, they have the same amount of carbons. They both have two methyl groups, right? But the only difference between these two is that the bond between the first carbon so there's this is basically two carbons right two carbons attached one carbon has the methyl group and another carbon has the methyl group i'm just not going to draw draw it out but let's just say something like this and then something like that and then a single bond so basically this bond so this molecule that we're working with right this is basically the Newman projections. Uh, I mean, the new, these are Newman projections of this molecule right here. Um, and the whole conformational isomers is basically if we rotate this sigma bond, right? This sig this signal, this sing uh, single bond right here. If this is rotated, right? Depending on how we rotate this, we can get this, and we can keep rotating it, and we'll get you know different conformations of this. So this is basically what conformational isomers is. Uh, you have these, so these two guys, we will call them conformational isomers. They have the same connectivity, but they differ by a sigma bond rotation, right? You can see how this CH3 that was all the way at the top, right? It was rotated to the right, basically. It was rotated to the right. And now that same CH3, that same methyl group, it is right over here. Um, and that's basically what conformational isomers is. Same connectivity but the, they differ by a sigma bond rotation or a single bond rotation. Um, that's what that is. So 